Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Wednesday, September 13th, 528 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from San Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a weak uptrend. Uptrend kicked off on August 29th with an O'Neill-style follow-through day, but we've had no follow-through to the follow-through as we've uh, been in an 11 day tight range on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. Meanwhile, mid caps and small caps continue to deteriorate. Let's take a look over here at the trend gauge. Leaders, we've still got the green arrow here. Uh, none breaking below the 21 day moving average. A couple of tested them today. Not, when I say none, I'm talking about my 21 over 21 list. Uh, three undercut and reclaim the 21 day by the end of the day today. Uh, but we're putting the yellow arrow on here as the RG8 continues to deteriorate. That may be a little bit of a heads up that uh, it may follow through to the leaders. We absolutely want the wind at our backs when we're putting more money into the market for clients. Now let's go to the five major indexes and uh, the three time frames that we track them across. You can see we've got a couple of sub notes here. Short term, five major indexes versus the 21 day moving average neutral. We've got the, the NASDAQ 100 holding above the 21 and the 50 also. Uh, we've got the S&P 500 and the Dow below the 21. S&P basically right on the 21. And we've got mid caps and small caps lagging badly. Same situation for the 50 day uh, medium term moving average. And long term, the 200 day moving average breaking out the yellow arrow for the first time as small caps closed, let's just say right on the 200 day moving average. I think it's a hair below, but um, I mean, if it, we closed 30 seconds earlier, it might have been above or below, but. From a decisive break standpoint, it's not there. We're right on the 200 day moving average. So what happened today? Day 11 of this week uptrend, tight range, day one being the follow through day, uh, S&P and NASDAQ 100 unable to make uh, any, any progress. Uh, mid caps and small cap weakness continues. Here are the final numbers. RG8, our eight growth ETF composite down 0.68%, not good. S&P 500 open near flat. Uh, some intraday volatility as today was CPI day and CPI came in uh, mostly in line. A couple of readings were hotter than expected and initially we gapped down pre-market on that, but re we recovered to uh, basically a flat open or small uh, positive open had some intraday volatility. Still, the range was fairly tight. S&P up 0.12%. NASDAQ 100 was the leader pretty much all day, up 0.38%. Dow down two tenths of a percent. Here's where the trouble starts, mid caps and small caps. Mid caps down six tenths of a percent. Russell down 0.78%. Um, anytime you see oils down and banks down, which is what we saw today, uh, that's a major headwind for mid and small caps. Global diversified 60-40 stock and bond, just barely positive. Uh, global stocks up 0.03, global bonds up 0.10. In-house protection uh, up 0.14%, uh, slightly above the S&P 500. And that was with some combination of headwinds and tailwinds from uh, our stocks. We'll talk about that when we get to the tail of the tape. And we'll talk about a few other charts of interest. Let's get into it. Here's the S&P 500. And you can see all of this, let's call it a six day mess here, where price is overlapping the eight day, 21 day, and the 50 day moving average. Let's go to the 30 minute and you can see this uh, more clearly. This was day one of the consolidation. It was the follow through day. Tried to poke above highs, tested the bottom of the range and now chopping uh, in a tight range. Market is coiling uh, for a move. You can kind of see this big triangle that's forming here. It's tightening up. We're gonna go one way or another. Uh, I have, uh, obviously I'm a 
we're positioned long, I would much rather see uh, clients making money. But as always, we've got a plan uh, for both outcomes. Here's the triangle on the daily basis. You can see uh, see it there also. And right in the middle is this, uh, let's call it the uh, volleyball net, tennis net, ping pong net, pickleball net, whatever you want to call it. Uh, moving averages going above and below on the S&P 500. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. Very similar uh, tightness. You can see the declining trend line there, um, rising trend line there. The difference is the 50 and the 21 are uh, holding. Uh, most of this intraday action, you can see the same tight range on the 30 minute chart, uh, starting with the follow through day capped with uh, day four after the follow through day. This is when uh, NVIDIA reported we had the gap up uh, and then reversal and we haven't been able to get above that level since trading in a tight range from basically 369 to 380 on the NASDAQ 100. Let's go to the Dow. Uh, showing some weakness, or sorry, some relative strength over the last week after a couple of weeks of relative weakness. Uh, you can see the we've got a um, triangle forming here. Also, it's forming below the 50 and the 21 day moving average. Mid caps, here's where the bad stuff begins. Really, no triangle whatsoever, uh, unless you want to draw a descending triangle. Uh, here, as we, we keep making lower lows, we're into the bottom of the range from mid-August. One look at the relative strength line tells you all that you need to know there. Small cap, same situation. Relative weakness, declining trend line, uh, right on the 200-day moving average. Definitely need to hold this level here. How about the VIX? How'd the VIX do today? VIX is showing uh, contracting volatility, and that's what we're seeing. The S&P 500 back below 1%. It peaked two weeks ago at 1.04% uh, of an ATR. That's the average true range on a daily basis, now down to 0.98%. Contracting volatility is typically seen as bullish. It's when volatility picks up. Uh, that fear comes into the market and we start chopping all over the place with wider ranges. But uh, that stopped about uh, two weeks ago when we got back below this 15 level and back below the declining 21 day moving average. This is positive for, for the bulls. But, you know, obviously, if you get too far uh, to the bottom, you just you can only get uh, down so far and right now the 1270 ish level has provided support for the vix once you get there and you hang there for a week or two um, you see volatility uh, spikes up happen there uh, three times going back to july let's go to the dollar uup tight range today off the adma gentle pullback within an uptrend for the dollar. How did that carry over to precious metals? Uh, mildly higher, gold mildly lower, gold stocks also mildly lower, and silver, hi-ho silver down another percent, Bitcoin, Red, uh, Bitcoin, B-I-T-O, positive on the day. Bitcoin-related stocks were weak. But note this 21-day moving average just uh, completely containing uh, this downtrend on Bitcoin. Very clearly, a move above that level would be a change in character. Let's flip over to bonds now. BND up on the day, fairly tight range uh, on bonds, but expanded from yesterday's range. Uh, let's go to uh, TLT. TLT actually was down on the day while uh, the, the 10 and the 5, uh, the price was higher, meaning we got uh, slightly higher prices 
uh, on the 30 year, lower on the five year and the 10 year. Uh, below the 21 day moving average is the price on TLT. TYX, this is the yield. Tried to poke its head above. I mentioned uh, this level yesterday. Tried to poke its head above and did tick up pre market. Uh, but let's go to a five minute chart and you can see the behavior here. So you can see the little gap open and then uh, it's sold off uh, twice during the day. Not necessarily in sync with what stocks were doing uh, on the long bond anyway. Let's go to the 10 year TNX. And here again, poked its head above this uh, this level, this little shelf that's formed, uh, and back below it as the day went along, pulling back in rates. Good uh, stocks volatile because of uh, the CPI. People trying to figure out what it means, and uh, tight range, but still volatility. All right, that's our inter asset correlation. Let's hit the tail of the tape. Uh, CPI mildly hotter than expected. Some in line, some mildly hotter. We've got PPI tomorrow morning. Let's see how producer prices fared as uh, this flows through into uh, consumer prices. Bear case, we still can't make up our mind what we're doing. It's not a bear. It's not a bull. It's neutral. Uh, tight consolidation, that's the bottom line. C11, that's a 11 day consolidation. We're basically right on the eight, right on the 21 and right on the 50 uh, for the NASDAQ 100 with an upside bias on the NASDAQ 100, downside bias uh, for the S&P 500. Let's go to uh, sectors, not a lot of standouts today. XLY and XLU uh, up on the day, on the downside, uh, banks, basic materials industrials and real estate what do we do in-house brt and fastly uh in line with what uh leading stocks are doing pulled back for the second straight day we trimmed a little bit of that reducing our beta uh small losses on these under five percent on a one percent position that's a combined 0.1 percent impact to the overall portfolio uh playing it tight with the wind not at our back uh, beta down from 1.43 to 1.36. Bottom line, S&P and NASDAQ 100 log day 11 of a tight range. However, mid and small caps weak again. Second day of weakness for leading stocks also. Uh, let's get to some charts. Go to a daily range. First of all, let's go through the portfolio. Strength today from uh, NVIDIA and from Tesla. Again, back to the tight range you can see uh, keeping in line with what's going on with the indexes uh, this is a tight range a little bit lower than the overall index range uh, which is a negative but we're not breaking down from this 50-day moving average we're again coiling for a move one way or another uh, no guarantee which way it is and we don't predict but we're again we're prepared for either outcome tesla on the other hand uh, holding that gap up and this cup and handle uh, that we're seeing on Tesla is very similar to the cup and handle that we're showing on the indexes. The difference is a couple of stocks have broken out from that handle, Tesla being one of them, and our largest holding, Uber, being the other. You can see this breakout. Uber pulled back, tested the ADMA today very nicely and bounced there, finishing up a half of a percent. So, um, some strong action mixed in with some stocks. On the other hand, let's look at some problem children, Vastly. Uh, undercut reclaim the 21 EMA, uh, relative weakness over the last uh, week and a half on this stock. Maybe, uh, you know, in when a consolidated, when a market's consolidating, it's hard to make progress in leading names. It's, they're few and far between. Fastly, some progress, but has paused for the last, last week and a half. I really like the way uh, VRT was acting, holding up great until the last two days when it broke below this uh, consolidation. Did undercut, but hold the 21-day EMA. Celsius, the champ, uh, we bought this yesterday on the 60-minute stochastic cross and the bounce off the ADMA, just too far too fast. 
Uh, looked like it, it, I mean, there's a relative strength leader early and gave all that up. This is the type of market that we're in here. The spikes uh, very often in the morning before determining what direction it wants to take. In this case, uh, it pulled back after getting too extended. When you're not in a up, strong uptrending market, uh, it's a headwind for all leading stocks. That's why William O'Neill often said the M was the most important letter in Canslim. Oh, uh, let's see. What else do we want to show? Uh, we showed Uber. Let's just show uh, NRGU, the other holding in our portfolio that has been consolidating. We sold some of this into strength yesterday, but oil very clearly uh, continues to be the leading sector. When oil leads, that's not really a good thing for the overall market, here's XLK. This is 45% Microsoft and Apple and can't get back above its 50-day moving average. Uh, taking a little bit of a step back, if you look at the 30-minute chart here, this, this is consolidating also, but it's uh, stuck at the bottom of the range. I, again, another day 11 consolidation in XLK. Uh, commit that to your mind. Let's compare the two big ones. Here's Microsoft. Microsoft with an upward bias at the top of the range trying to go higher. On the other hand, Apple, that's not a good looking range, is it? And this uh, big move down here, uh, this was the day, uh, let's see, this was the day that the the, Chi the, the rumor was the Chinese government was uh, limiting their usage of iPhones. Here's their earnings, negative reaction, recovered most of it. Here's China supposedly saying that they're limiting their iPhones. Uh, and then day two of that. And then somebody asked a Chinese official about it today. They said, we have no idea what you're talking about. So who knows where those rumors came from, but let's go to a 10 minute chart here and you can see the weakness yesterday off of their uh, event where basically I haven't read where a single person was impressed by what they did with their uh, iWatch upgrades. Uh, compare that to Tesla seems to be coming up with something new basically every day. Uh, and you got to wonder if at some point the weak growth, the weak earnings growth from Apple with a PE of 30 is ever going to catch up to it. I mean, I'm an Apple iPhone dedicated, will never consider an Android uh, but if I'm just going to buy one every couple of years, um, that's not really growth. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I know there's a lot of Apple fanboys out there. But we go by price action, and we also look at 1% decline in sales that the last quarter, 3% the prior quarter, 5% the quarter before that. Where's the growth? Sales shrinking, not growing. You can manufacture earnings one way or another. Uh, but not seeing it in Apple, and uh, we've got a few clients with uh, large legacy Apple positions with big gains, and uh, we're hedging them uh, while uh, Apple is under the 50 and the 21-day moving average. Uh, if, and, of course, Apple is a headwind. If Apple's acting uh, poorly, that's a headwind uh, for the overall indexes, and relative strength is confirming the weakness uh, in the price. That's going to wrap it. As always, we'd like to hear from you. I'm Donna at RiveraAsset.com via email. My partner, Dan Stewart, Dan at .com if you're interested in becoming a client, or the phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the market, it's how much of that you can keep. We're going back and forth between the grow and the protection part over the last 11 days as we consolidate, but uh, we'll be patient and see it. If, uh, if we break one way or the other, and we've got a plan laid out uh, for either direction. If you're checking us out on YouTube, we'd appreciate it if you like uh, and certainly subscribe. We've got over a thousand subscribers to our uh, YouTube channel now. Get a couple hundred views a night, maybe one out of five, one out of six clicks the like button. If you're something you don't like, put that in the comments too. I read them all and comment to them all. But that's going to wrap it uh, for Wednesday, August 13th, August, September 13th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset. Tell them it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.